the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this sacred liturgy in this wintry, wintry, ordinary time, this third Sunday of ordinary time. And also we join the church throughout our diocese and our country in Catholic, the beginnings of Catholic Schools Week. A special prayer of gratitude and blessing for this great gift for all of us. So let us prepare to celebrate this sacred liturgy as we acknowledge our sins. Let's open our hearts to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all people into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the healing touch of God flows out from you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us a baptized community to share your good news. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak until midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, His Excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, words Lord, Lord, are spirit, spirit and, and life. life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your, Your words, Lord, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your, Your words, words Lord, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the, of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your, Your words, words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your, Your words, Lord, are spirit, spirit and life. life. 
<clears throat> a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and proclaim liberty to captives. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as, though who's, as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee to the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story told about a man who was deaf from birth. And different times he would watch in amazement of people moving and swaying around a dance floor but it made little sense to what they were about but at one point there was a miracle of, of uh, some procedure that enabled him to hear and all of a sudden because of his hearing he heard the music and began to understand what they were doing think too of a rookie athlete who from the very earliest days would have to spend all kinds of time in, in weightlifting and sprints and exercises and practice, 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 and wondering some, sometimes, what's this all about? What is it going to lead to? Until one day when playing a game that was able to have great accomplishment and feel the good about being able to sustain himself and to feel a great bit of success. So we grew in an understanding of all of that practice that went before. And there are all kinds of examples of that. Is that not true? Is that we can all hear something, we can all have the beginnings of some experience, but sometimes the meaning of what we hear or what we are about can be pretty obscure. It can be kind of missing the point. Sometimes maybe it is that we don't know enough yet. Sometimes maybe we're not paying enough attention. Sometimes, maybe we get even a sense of a hardened heart, that we've kind of closed ourselves off to new things, or to learning, new, new kind of possibilities. Sometimes we just get, perhaps, distracted. So, it's not so much hearing that we're lacking many times, but it's understanding. It's understanding 
that we're invited to grow more deeply into in our everyday lives. And as we celebrate the beginnings of this Catholic Schools Weeks, we think of all of the, the opportunities of education that from very young ages, but throughout a lifetime, that we continue to grow in that goodness. And the theme of Catholic Schools this week is to learn, to serve, to lead, and to succeed. But it takes, again, not just hearing lots of information, but growing in an understanding. That's one of the gifts of wisdom, is wisdom is how we translate what we learn, what we hear into our everyday lives or apply it to our work or whatever it might be. So it's the same thing with sacred scripture is that sometimes, I suppose, we, any of us, we can almost approach Scripture as kind of in one ear and out the other and not really really begin and, or continue to comprehend what is really being understood, what was really being said. And sometimes we know in Scripture that the passages are rather easy for us to understand. But some of the passages, some of the elements of sacred scripture, Old Testament and New, scholars have spent centuries probing the meanings and growing in understandings of, of what it meant. And so a sense of living kind of scripture. That says we're always kind of, when we pose ourselves to hear God's word, that maybe sometimes we think we've heard a particular passage over and over again, but is there a sense of newness and openness to a new kind of message? So we heard in the first reading about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was sent to help the people as they returned to Jerusalem to rebuild their city. And as part of the rebuilding and reconnectedness with their past after they had been in exile for a long time, that he called the people together at the city gate and asked Ezra to be able to read the scriptures again that they hadn't heard for a long time, but also to be a guide to interpret them. And we can't do that with television, nor probably in our home parishes, but, but Ezra read for a long period of time, hours and hours and hours, and the people were just glued to what he was reading, and instead he began to weep because they were so excited to hear that word of Moses, the Torah, again, which they hadn't heard for a long time. But it is in that goodness that they grew in understanding because not only did they hear God's word in the Torah, but Ezra and others helped them to understand it. And so we meet Jesus in the, in the synagogue, in the, in the gospel story. And again, a very favorite, familiar scripture passage that he shared with from Isaiah. And as he did so, to be interesting how people's reaction changed. Once at the very end of that, at the end of the gospel, he said, today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And so those beautiful words that we'll hear this next Sunday in the, in the gospel is their multitudinous reactions to it that sometimes there was some sense of blockage that as Jesus was taking on that identity of the suffering servant, those very words in setting forth his agenda, his mission uh, as, as the Son of God in, and the Messiah is that they weren't ready to hear that. And although, of course, some were. And so there's that great gift for all of us is, is to think about when we hear God's word, it's not Jesus so much as saying, do you hear me now? It's really about, are you understanding what is being said? And do we continue to grow the gift of understanding of his word? And know very well that as, the word, as Jesus quoted in Isaiah, for every one of us, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. By our baptism, we are consecrated and anointed and gifted with that opportunity of growing that gift of understanding and wisdom. And then to proclaim it by our words and by our lives. May the Lord continue to strengthen us. So we profess this great faith of the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us pray now for our concerns and for those of all people. That all anointed as faith ministers, including Pope Francis, may be prophets of truth, justice, and faith traditions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those with authority over the lives of others may use that authority to promote justice, charity, and be true servants rather than looking to be served, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit of the Lord to be upon us as we strive to live Christian lives in the examples of Jesus and the New Testament, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's love and compassion to be with all who are ill, suffering in mind or soul, or living with a challenging disability, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Cecilia Kalman, the intention of this Mass, and all who have completed their earthly journey may now enjoy the life of, with Christ, our Redeemer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those personal prayers of our hearts, known only to us and our Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Abundant God, you are the center of our lives. Deepen our connection with you and empower us to be witnesses of hope and trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your Lord resurrection and until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, for the, kingdom the, the power, power and the, the glory, glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share Jesus' word of peace for those who are near us. Peace be with you, Lowell. Thank you. Peace be with you, James. And with your spirit. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I, I am, am not, not worthy that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, my roof but only say, say the word and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our Mass ascended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. On behalf of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison and Monsignor Larry Bakke, its director and pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe, I thank you for taking the time to share with us in this time of faith, word, and Eucharist. My son James was our acolyte, and I am Lowell Rausch. We are faith members of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in Monona. It was a pleasure to share with you again this celebration of the Lord's love, word, and gift for eternal life, Holy Eucharist. An important part of the Apostolate TV Mass Ministry is enabling the deaf to worship with us via the interpretation this morning of Michelle Guyette of St. Dennis Parish in Madison and the Apostolate for providing closed captioning. Val Thomas of St. Pius X Parish in Cambridge provided the Ministry of Music. Our ability to bring this program of faith, hope, and inspiration is made possible by the social and spiritual concern for persons of all faiths with disabilities of the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV. We wish you a beautiful coming week and pray that you always know the love, mercy, and compassion of the Lord in your life. <laughs>